The catfish is one of the largest freshwater species in Europe. It can measure over seven foot long and weigh in excess of 200 pounds. This is the species we're going to target in this edition of Predators. Strangely enough though, the catfish isn't even a native of this country. The first specimens were introduced in 1880 when 70 fish were imported from Germany and Romania and stocked into the Duke of Bedford's estate at Woburn Abbey in Bedfordshire. Unbelievable though it might seem, some of the offspring of those original fish are still there to this day. Since then they have been stocked into waters across the country, like this one, the Neutrobates Yately Split Lake in Hampshire. It's deep, it's dark and it holds some magnificent specimens. Ian Welch used to be a self-confessed tension carp fanatic, then he caught a catfish. He has since become a specialist of the species, who has fallen under the spell of this impressive brute. Well you have to say Ian, catfish are singularly the most ugly predator in Britain. What on earth makes you fish for them? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, Kev, and I'm not talking about you. <laughs> These are incredibly impressive creatures. Fins top and bottom, massive mouth, powerful. They've been on this planet of ours for millions of years. They're awesome predators. They demand respect. They're really powerful as well, aren't they? What's going to happen if I manage to catch one tonight? Oh, they are the most awesomely powerful predator. I remember the first one I hooked myself at Claydon Lake a good few years ago. It ran me all over the lake. I couldn't stop it. I thought I'd hooked the biggest fish in the lake. Mm. It was nine pounds. <laughs> so you're really smitten by the big catfish bug then? Oh, yes, they're wonderful creatures. They do have a downside though. They are mainly nocturnal feeders. So I'm afraid we're going to have to spend tonight, maybe even two nights, at this wonderful lake trying to catch you one. Never mind, I'll put up with that, I think, Ian. Tell me, what's your largest catfish? I've fished quite a few lakes for catfish over the years. Best I've had, an absolute beast, just over 36 pounds. And hopefully you'll be meeting a fish like that over the next couple of nights. I do hope so. And this is Europe's largest freshwater fish, reaching weights of over 200 pounds. That's a staggering 50 pounds more than I weigh. In Russia, commercial fishermen have caught this species weighing 600 pounds and nearly 16 feet in length. With this long, smooth, scaleless body, like a giant prehistoric tadpole, the catfish is capable of eating fish nearly half its own size. In fact, the catfish will feed on bird life, rodents, just about anything that lives in or around the lake. This is a truly sinister predator. How are we going to catch the catfish then? What tactics are we going to adopt? They've got wonderful sensory apparatus. They're able to pick up smells in the water, vibrations in the water. That's exactly how they find their prey. Catfish are marvellous scavengers and that is one of the most important hunting instincts. Mm. They hunt around the lakes looking for dead and dying fish. They've got very, very poor eyesight. So if we can present a bait that smells attractive, that smells fishy, they'll pick up on it and they will feed upon it. Mm. And we can present baits just like that. Man-made, made of fish proteins, wonderful fish smells and oils that the catfish is going to sense in the water, we're going to use exactly the same bait that carp anglers use. We're going to use boilies. A boilie? You just want to go carp fishing in, I know you. There's more to a boilie than meets the eye. Made of fish meal, wonderfully appealing. We can offer all sorts of taste and smell sensations. The catfish are going to love it. So Charles, what have you got for me? Mmm, salmon oil. Smell that one. Isn't it marvellous? Mm. Now, what about this one? I bet you recognise this one as a carp angler, Mr Green. Squid and octopus. Absolutely. Now, where are you going to throw them at? Anywhere? Anywhere in the lake, do? Earlier, I spotted out a large bed of trout pellets mm. that's going to provide a, a wonderful carpet of attraction that the catfish are hopefully going to home in and feed upon mm -hmm. out there in the water. Now, what I think is going to happen, the catfish are going to be laying under those snags over to our left. So they've been there during the day, all day, out of the sun, just lurking on the Absolutely. Earth. They do like quiet, dark corners of the lake. So I think they're going to be under there at the moment. And as soon as it starts to get dark, they're going to feed around those margins, then slowly move out into the main body of the lake. So the plan is to intercept them as they move out. First bait, tight to the snags. The next bait, just off it. 
the final one right out in the open water. And what rig are you going to use for that? How are we going to catch them? Basically, carp tackle, but very much stepped up. Two pop-up boilies attached to a very sharp, very strong size 2 hook. And what about the line there? Very strong? Quite important. We've got 15 pound main line, mm -hmm. and at the business end, we've got a very, very strong 60 pound braid. And this is presumably not only to take the weight of the fish, but also to stop the abrasion on their pads. Absolutely. They've got sandpaper-like pads, as you know, on the inside of their mouth, and we need something that's very strong, that's going to withstand maybe 20 minutes of pressure during a fight rubbing against those pads. Now, I notice you also said pop-up boilies. Why pop-ups and not bottom baits? If you can imagine the scene on the bottom, a lovely bed of trout pellets we've put out there, and they're going to be wafting about very attractively over the top. When the catfish moves in on his hunting patrol, that's the first thing he's going to grab when he comes into the swim. Great. Well, let's see if it works in. Let's get it chucked out there. I have to say, you've put an awful lot of thought and planning into setting this trap. It's not purely by chance, is it? You, you seem to be getting right in the psyche of these hunting fish, don't you? I certainly do. You have to remember, though, that sometimes when you set the traps right, all you've got to do is sit back and wait. So this is our main job now. We've got the baits out, you've positioned them nicely. It literally is just a waiting game now, is it? Yes, it is. As soon as it gets dark, those catfish are going to start coming out. They're going to start feeding. They're going to be sensing the smells in the water. They're going to be using their whiskers to locate their prey. And that's going to be our boiling. The eyes are tiny and situated on the top of the head. In fact, the catfish is very short-sighted. But that doesn't matter because this predator has other formidable weapons that it uses to detect and capture its prey. The trademark of this species is its six whiskers. These enable the catfish to pick up tiny vibrations and smells in the water. These two whiskers situated in front of the eyes are like ultra-sensitive feeding probes. Should any prey species move around the fish's head when it's actively feeding, the catfish opens its cavernous mouth, creating a vacuum, water rushes in, taking the prey with it. Well, it's 10 o'clock on night one. The traps are set and the baits, well, they're out there. Lots of free bait around them. I suppose what we're waiting to find out now is whether our boily dead baits are going to work. I suppose basically there's no other way than just to wait and see. The waiting game is well and truly on now. Time for bed. Well, looks like we've got some action, folks. Um, the netting party. Come on. And what a lovely way to wake up, Ian. A bit of screaming time. Absolute flyer. I don't miss a pose, either. I was fast asleep and just suddenly a single take from me. Yeah. Scream from the optonic. From the light, and we were in. Oh, you're giving that a good old thump, isn't it? I mean, that's a, how, a powerful rod there. It's a three right? and a half test curve, and it's, uh, it's <laughs> been bent double. <laughs> there we go. There's no stopping him. <laughs> this is an incredibly powerful rod, and I can't do a thing to stop him. Oh, what power. What incredible oh. power. He just stops you dead, doesn't he? As soon as you're trying to pull him back, he just floors the rod down. Absolutely. Well, those, those baits are certainly nice and smelly, and it's uh, I've no problem finding it, has it? Come on. Don't seem to be making much impression on him. It nailed up in the weed. Well, I hope he's not uh, wrapped us around a snag somewhere. I'm not feeling anything at no. all. Do hope we're not going to lose him. I think we're just going to have to uh, pull for a break on this one, Kevin, and reset the traps again. Oh, I felt him kick then. Yeah, yeah. But I'm still absolutely solid.
There are definitely something there. Yeah, it did. He's definitely still attached. We have got a boat. Are we getting somewhere? I've moved him. Come on. Cool, that was last minute stuff. Come on, I've you. I've definitely moved him. Come on, you brute, come here. Keep him moving now. Same. Once he's moving, we should have the upper hand. Good grief, I don't think I've ever put so much pressure on a fish in my life. Can you see him? He's just yep. swelled out there, Kev. Absolutely. But he's moving. If I can keep him moving, yep. we might just win this battle after all. Oh, the power of these fish is just incredible. I thought the rod was going to snap. Well, if he sticks his head up and I get half a shot at him, he's in this net, I tell you. There he is. Come on, you beauty. Here he comes. Get in, Mac. Here he comes. Get in. Yes! Well done. He's ours. Get in there, sir. That was a hard fought one. Oh, you deserve that one, I can tell you. I'm ready for a cup, I don't know about you. <laughs> I want the champagne, I want something stronger after that. Oh, do you know what you've put us through? And there, he's one superb Wells catfish. Let's drop him on the mat. Ooh, nice and safely on the unhooking mat. Absolutely. Oh, look at him. Look at that fish. He's got to be what? Oh, getting on for a metre long. Yep. And uh, probably, oh, probably around the 30 pound mark. Well, he certainly wanted that boilie, didn't he? Yeah, I told you they were the ultimate scavengers, Kev. We put a big bed of boilies and trout pellet out there and we fooled him into thinking that was his fish supper for the night. Got a huge mouth, but I could almost get my whole arm down that mouth. <laughs> it's absolutely cavernous. And he's got powerful fins up here, real stiff pecs and... Tiny little dorsal fin, one of the, the smallest in the fish world. It looks rather comical compared to the size of his body. It does. But often when they're striking on the surface, that's the only sign you'll see of them. You'll see that zigzagging across the surface of the water. Well, viewers, this is what we've come here for. A perfect example of a catfish. We tricked him with a boilie, but I think in... Uh, in part two, we're going to try something else, aren't we, Ian? Yes, we'll give them a proper diet. We'll give them squid, we'll give them dead fish, we'll give them fish sections, we'll give them something proper to get their teeth into, Kev. Join us after the break. Good morning. He's in again, my boy. The power of this fish is just the same as that one we had earlier. I actually burnt my finger on the spool if that one took off, Kevin. And this one's on a fish bait, isn't it? Yes, it is. What have you got this one on? I put on a large chunk of oily mackerel. Right. Which I injected with some salmon oil to give it some additional flavour. Yeah. And it had been out in the water a couple of hours and it just flew off, didn't it? There he is. I imagine he's probably been out hunting in the open water most of the night and I've probably intercepted him as he was going back into the into the snags to lay up during the daylight hours. So I think we've uh, probably got one uh, returning home from a night on the tiles. So basically, um, you put a, a kebab with chilli sauce out for him. <laughs> Give him a real smelly fishy bait, something with a real oomph to get him, you know, get those taste buds going a bit. Absolutely. It's like big game fishing in Surrey or <laughs> Surrey, <laughs> Hampshire. The head of this mighty predator is slightly flattened and contains a really wide, dustbin-sized mouth. Velcro-like pads cover both jaws and its tongue, preventing the escape of any captured fish. Additionally, crushing pads further down his throat mean that any captured meals are decimated immediately. In my opinion, this has to be the ultimate freshwater predator. It fights long and hard. It has an amazing ability to swim backwards during the fight. It's got to be the most powerful freshwater predator that any angler is ever going to encounter. We certainly seem to be gaining the upper hand now. I don't like to speak too soon. No, no you just... But uh, he does seem to be slowing up slightly. He's still, ooh, he's still look a long that. way out. But we have got him on the surface and that's always a good sign. Now we seem to be getting the better of him. Oh, that was a lovely waft of his tail there. Oh, that's another big fish. It is another big one, Ian. It's another beastie, Kev. 
pull his head up, mate, and I'll slide him under. Oh, it's another beast. Get in there. Get in there. Get in the tail. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> Superb. Excellent. It's another cracker. What a way to start the day. <sighs> well, that's a fish, and that on the tails, you said, on his way back home. And you've had him. We have. We've got him. Superb, sir. Let's have a little look at him. I think he is even bigger than the first one. Oh, yes. Oh, most definitely. That is easily over 30 pounds. Oh, yes. I think we might even be talking 35 pounds here. Oh, Whoa, that. look oh. at the girth on that. Look at the coloration as well. Very different to the last one. Isn't it just? Lovely browny tinge across his back all the way down to the tail. Different mottling. And yes, he is a very, very large fish. Isn't he just? Let's have a look at him swing him around. Oh, look. What a beast he is. Absolutely. And look at those whiskers at the front. See, that's what? what's uh, that's what's located your bait, isn't it? Yes, four small ones underneath and the two long ones at the front end. And that's how he's picked up the scent of that fish in the water. He uses that almost exclusively to find his prey. Um, but the... The sensory perception that they have through those whiskers is absolutely second to none in the yeah. fishy world. He's a magnificent beast, Ian. I really want to catch one of these. Tell me a bit more about the bait you used and uh, how well I'm going to use it to catch one. Well, we actually caught this one on a fish section, Kevin. The bait I actually used was a mackerel. Very oily, very smelly fish, which I'd also injected with some salmon oil to give it some enhanced attraction. So what we'll do for you, we'll cut a few sections of mackerel, yep. we'll try a mackerel section on one rod, yep. and the other thing we'll do, they also love coarse fish, we'll try putting out a coarse fish dead bait as well. There's a little lake just up the track, loads of little roach and perching, we'll perhaps go and try and catch a few of those, we'll fish a mackerel on one rod, we'll fish a roach popped up on the other one. One thing I am good at is catching tiddlers. Yep. Well done, you got it. <laughs> Now Ian, tell me, as this one goes in the net for a, a catfish to eat later, what about all these myths and legends about these giant catfish scoffing water skiers, errant dogs and young children that wander into the shallows? Well, most of the time, that's exactly what they are, Kev. They are myths and legends. The truth of it is, yes, catfish are voracious predators. They'll eat a, a, a lot of the wildlife you see around the lakes. Children, dogs, no. Frogs, water voles, yes. Ducks, geese even. Even fully grown ones? Yes, I've seen them at times, cruising under the surface. Ducks have swum past, in a great big flurry and spray and water. Tail comes out of the water, the duck's gone. They're an easy meal. After watching Ian bag two monster catfish on the first night of our session, I was keen to get in on the act during the second and final night. Ian got me to kickstart the swim in the afternoon by baiting it with water-soluble PVA bags stuffed with trout pellets. Then he showed me the hook baits I'd be using. Right, what are the catfish going to be dining out on tonight then, Ian? We have a veritable feast of flavours and sensations for them to savour, Kevin. Marvellous. First off, a hair-rigged mackerel section. Right. Large size 1-0 hook and a wonderful oily flesh giving off smells, fish oils, flavours, the whiskers and the sensory array are going to home in that from mm. a long way off. It stinks. Next, another absolute delight, an old cat fisherman's favourite, calamari squid. Oof. Again, presented on a hair rig, right. wonderful taste and smell sensations for the catfish to home in on. Now, you're not going to need any more attraction than that with a bait that smells as strong as that does. But we are. To increase the attraction, we've got some more PVA bags, Right. we're going to hook that onto our hook like so, Okay. and the next thing we're going to do, you're going to love this, <laughs> somehow I doubt that, we're going to put this anchovy extract straight onto the PVA bag, it won't dissolve it because it's oil based, PVA will dissolve in water, and lovely this is, Ooh. we're going to massage it into the PVA, and when that melts in the water, that is going to give a wonderful cap. Feast. A slick of stink, I think, is the way to describe it. OK, that's the second one done. But we're not finished yet. We have the fish we caught earlier. The roach, yep. Now, what's all this contraption going on here? It's a poly ball, which is going to make the roach float up in the water. Catfish do like to actively hunt on the surface. They're going to come up from underneath, and they're going to grab that. It's going to appeal to its hunting instincts, and it will present it perfectly in the upper warm layers of water. Well... 
there you have it, you've seen all the baits, take it from me, they absolutely stink, it's stomach churning around here. But we're going to give them a go and hopefully it's going to be my turn tonight. Welcome to the Last Chance Saloon, otherwise known as the West Bank and the Yateley Split Lake. This is my second and final night in search of a Hampshire catfish. He's just dropping down behind that far tree line. Where the shadows are hitting first, that's where it's going to lose the light. I've set a trap. It's out there, a really smelly bait. I think I'm ready for a cat attack at any time. If everything goes to plan, the next time you see me, I'm going to be in action. I'm going to be battling with a catfish. See you later. Morning Kev. Good morning Ian. A quiet night. Yep, and a much colder one as well. Yes, now that sun's up I don't think we've got a realistic chance. I'm afraid we haven't got you that first catfish. Why do you think we succeeded the first night and nothing last night? Any number of reasons, but like other major predators, lions for example, catfish can be binge feeders. They can feed hard and then like the lion last night they were perhaps just lying up. They weren't out there in the open water feeding where we wanted them to be. Well folks, fast fishing. There's no other way to put it. We caught some fantastic fish yesterday, but it wasn't my turn. Maybe I wasn't using the right bait. Maybe it wasn't in the right place. Maybe I just wasn't lucky enough. I know one thing though, having seen Ian nearly have his arms pulled out of his sockets when he had them, I'm coming back here and I'm gonna have another go at catfish sometime. It's a fantastic fish. Thank you very much, Ian, because uh, I enjoyed watching you nearly get dragged into the lake. Thanks very much for joining us and uh,